Miguel, you're chair of the Access to Culture platform in mm -hmm. Brussels. What exactly is that and why and how is it set up? Well, um, the European Access to Culture platform uh, was uh, set up um, three years ago and it was uh, initially um, created by the, oh, yeah, I could say created by the European Commission. Um, is a platform that is a process that is within the open method of coordination, which is a method in which the, the European institutions try to involve as many actors as possible in the development of European policies, and of course the civil society. So they launched this call uh, three years ago to, to catch and, and, and look for the sector, in this case the cultural sector, and the opinion of the cultural sector. Uh, there was many organizations uh, working at the European level in the cultural sector that uh, showed the interest to participate in this process. So the Commission made a, a small selection of uh, quite representatives of the different organizations in, in Europe. So um, at the end you have networks, associations, foundations, all of them working and interested in the, in the European cultural, cultural sector. Uh, so the first mandate they gave it to us was the, to create a set of recommendations uh, to set up uh, new policies uh, from 2014 uh, with the new budgetary uh, period of the, of the European Commission and as maybe you know there is a new program, at cultu a new cultural program that will be called Creative for Europe program. So our aim was especially to to orientate this uh, new European policy, but uh, well, the orientations and the recommendations are not only to the European institutions, but also to national, uh, regional and local authorities, of course, and uh, why not also to the, to the sector itself. No? So we try to, to orientate them since our point of view, which should be the next steps to be taken to develop the, the culture a European cultural sector in the in the future. And what sort of networks are involved? Well, there is a, a very big variety of, uh, of of networks. You have uh, people working in the dance sector, in the opera sector, in the music sector, in the film sector, in the literature sector. And you have also some foundations, like for instance the foundation I'm working for, which is working more on European a cultural integration and the culture itself, like a promoting culture to promote European integration. So you try, you, you have there like a, all kind of uh, different artistic expressions, but all of them have something in common that uh, they represent um, the sector at European level. It's not like they are representing only one specific organization or one specific uh, a sector in a, in a country or this or a discipline in a, in a country, or, but they are people, uh, organizations representing uh, many, many uh, countries and many interests across, across Europe. At one level, uh, festivals would certainly see access to culture about bringing in new audiences, bringing, making it more available to the population, and that's a matter of good marketing in their eyes in many cases. But I suspect that you have a much broader idea of what access to culture actually means. Yeah, of course, um, bringing new audiences is, of course, a very important thing, and marketing uh, in the cultural sector is important, of course, and we cannot discuss that. But we have to think on access to culture in a different way. When we are thinking in access to culture, uh, we are thinking about uh, active citizenship, about uh, creating a better democracy, about promoting a way of participating into society, you need people to have access to culture so you can let them think by themselves, have, have the possibility to have uh, different inputs and opinions so they can really interact into the society. So for me, the, 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 the promotion of access to culture is a, is a question of promoting democracy, of promoting human rights, of promoting the right to participate in the cultural life, which for me is the base of the society in general. So it's not so much access to as participation in that you're looking for? It's not, it's not just participation, it's, it's, it's to have a, well, for me culture is, is important in a way, and please don't misunderstand me, all kind of culture is important for me and the creation of culture or any dance of, 
or book or, or just um, painting is, is, is wonderful just for the, for the, just to create it itself. You don't have to have the purpose for that. But I think culture uh, should, can, or should come back, I will say, because in, I just uh, noticed a, a big change in, in, the, in the last years. Culture should come back to the, to the people. Culture should come back to the society. Not just being a question of, as you said before, of marketing, of uh, economics. Uh, culture should make people think and react to that thing. Should be a, a way of waking up minds. If culture doesn't get that, it's, it's like a, the purpose of culture is, is not complete. So for me, it's very important that uh, the cultural sector provokes new ways of thinking, makes you think about uh, where we're going, which is the situation right now, uh, what can we do as citizens to, to do something different. But it's also it's a way of involving the people. But it's also access to culture is not only the, the, the participation of, of the public, it's also the participation of the creators. Uh, public can become also a creator, even within a performance, and we have seen many examples like, like that. But it's also of creating access to create new culture, to create, to create access to the artist. Uh, is, and look for it, this interaction between the artist's expression and the public. That is the important thing of culture for me, and that is what we are looking also when we are promoting access to culture. Also, try to come back a little bit to that, those origins of, of the creation of cultural se sector, when the cultural uh, creation was a way of developing a society. This is the, the base of, of culture for, for me. And what are the barriers to that access that you see around you that, that is, be addressed? That is many, many, very, many barriers. You have, well, first, first of all, you have the physical barriers. Uh, when you talk about people, we have some kind of uh, exclusion into the society, people in risk of exclusion. Maybe I, I could think the most uh, typical one is the disabled people. I mean, when you don't have good access to culture because of different uh, reasons or disabilities you could have, even physical barriers, that is already a problem. You have also the economic, uh, the economic uh, barriers. Uh, no culture is accessible to, to everybody. Even if it is not conceived uh, like a elite culture, like a culture for the elites. Sometimes uh, when an artist or a performance is created for, every, it's created for everybody, but uh, it's not accessible because these uh, physical barriers and also because of these economic barriers. But there is much, many more, many more barriers in my opinion. You have the legal barriers. Uh, of course, uh, access to culture is recognized by the, the, the human rights, and, uh, but this is not real. You have to, to produce more legal uh, tools that uh, really promote access, access to culture. And then there is uh, basic human rights uh, barrier. That is maybe the, the worst of the barriers you could find when you try to, to find access to, to try to access to culture. I'm talking, for instance, about censorship. Uh, it looks uh, incredible that nowadays in the European Union, I'm not talking about Europe in general, yes, in the European Union, where uh, we are trying to promote so many beautiful values, and um, there is still places where creators cannot create because they are censored by politicians or by journalists or of, by different groups. And uh, this uh, also is a problem for people who really want this kind of culture because you, you don't allow access to this kind of thinking. Well, uh, and this is happening within the European Union. This is a big barrier because some people are scared to produce. And some people are even scared to, and it happens just uh, recently, is people are people is even scared to go to, to a performance because they can be attacked. Because they, they, people can think that they think it that way and, so those that uh, doesn't think that way will attack them. So that is a, a major problem, has to be solved. And of course, if you talk about third countries, especially some, some, some countries, and some of those countries that are called the, the new developing countries, 
uh, I think that in this case the, there is a lot of work to do. So because if they want really to develop like a, well, not only like economic uh, big uh, potentials, uh, they should first of all work on to develop the, the cultural uh, the access to culture to eliminate those freedom of expression barriers that will really allow the society to be a good and democratic society. And what aspects of culture do you see as particularly important that your the new policies of the European Union reach out and support? Well, it depends what do you mean by, by aspects, but uh, I will see, well, like uh, I said before, there is two, two ways of looking at that uh, from the public point of view. You need to, to have the possibility to participate into the society and, and to, to, to be able to, to, to have access to any kind of uh, artistic expression. But also, like an artist, uh, you have to be able to produce and you need to be sure that you are supported by, by, by the institutions that represent you in, the, in a democratic society. You need to be supported by the public, of course. Mm -hmm. And you need to be supported by the civil society, of course. You need to to feel yourself part of the of, of, of the of the society, like a like an artist. And what I also see important is that maybe the, the citizens and the public, and public between 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 brackets, but the beneficiaries of, of, of culture should also fight for that. It's not a it's not a question of asking the politicians or the, the, the courts to fight to promote more access to culture. I mean, everyone has to be involved, and that is maybe something that is not very well developed yet. Uh, people need to be wor working together. I mean, all of us in the same direction. And we tend to say, well, this is, a, this is culture. It's a question of the culture policy, and only from this department, which is dealing with, with culture. And we should involve not only the cultural department, because we already demonstrate that uh, culture is a uh, horizontal a policy. But op on top of that, you should in involve also the, the public, because it's the first one who should be interested to, to promote it, this access to culture. It's about their future at the end. How do you feel that festivals in particular can help this process? Well, for me, festivals are, I would say, the maximum expression of, of culture. It's a, it's a wonderful platform where you can mix uh, different disciplines uh, within uh, the same sector, even uh, same disciplines and different formats. This is the, the way of putting together all the ways of expression around a discipline. Because, for instance, if you talk about theater, uh, in a theater festival, you will have different kinds of theater, different ways of uh, seeing the theater, of expressing. Uh, but ar around that, uh, you can organize also many other things to, 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 to enrich the theater itself, like debates around the, the performance, like uh, you can even include uh, mus music and concerts and literature around them and so a festival is, is, a, is a big platform and is for me the maximum expression of, of culture and of, is, of course it's a, it's a way of uh, promoting especially this relation between the public and the cultural sector in a very informal way at the same time but this is also a place where um, the citizens can really have access to the, to, the, to the cultural sector, to the artists itself. Sometimes, and it's something about what I complain about, is uh, uh, you go to, a, to see a performance, any kind of music or theater, or, and, and you don't have access to the creator. And in the festivals, because they are all of them together around there, it's much more easy. And that is one of the most beautiful things in, in a festival, to, to, to create this kind of relationship between the citizen and the, and the artist. Festivals Association, the European Festivals Association, is celebrating its 60th anniversary mm -hmm. this year. And I wondered if you had a message for it and for its members. Well, I will say, I will say then that they should take this advantage. Uh, well, 60 years is, is a lot. And I really congratulate them for, for that. And if they got that, it's because they are doing it in the right way. 
So first of all, I have to congratulate them, but uh, don't, don't sleep, please, is what I will say then. Uh, we are living difficult moments, especially right now, economic, uh, political crisis is very serious and uh, it can, can put everything in danger. And when I say everything, even a festival with 60 years of experience can be also in danger. In danger. The culture itself is, is, in danger, is in danger. So uh, what I will say is that uh, put all your creativity, all your efforts, all your experience to try to, to keep going and try to, to, to fight to get the public more involved into the cultural, cultural sector. I think it is one of the main challenges nowadays. We are living in a digital area, but sometimes for me it looks like the digital area and all these new tools and communication tools is, is there, there, there is a telephone slogan that say, um, making people together, no? but I think it's the opposite. So many communications doesn't allow us to interact in person. Festivals is a wonderful uh, occasion to make people be together, and that is, that is wonderful. We are human beings, but we are not conceived to talk by the phone or just by doing this with our hands. We are conceived to talk with each other, and we want to develop ourselves. We have to use this personal relationship. And festivals are a, a perfect platform to promote this relationship between, between uh, public and citizens, waking up minds, making people think, and creating new things and new, new ideas. But uh, we have to fight very hard for this. And well, this experience, the, the, the European Festival Association has, has to be uh, taken in, into account and they have to profit from this experience to keep, keep fighting hard as they have been doing until now. I think they, they make a wonderful job and they can, they can still do much more. And I, I know very people will, will trust them for that. Michael Ramos, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much to you for inviting me. Thank you.